Welcome to the channel everybody, my name is Ryan and this is Unreal World and we are back today to start a brand new adventure. This is the beginning of a new series for the channel and I do have several previous series including a short tutorial set of videos which you can find linked in the description below if you're interested in any of those. This is also a modded playthrough and the mod set including instructions on how to manually install all those mods are also linked in the description below but um, we are going to be embarking upon a spirit quest sort of journey here for this one instead of like my most recent one where I tried to take out the enemy tribe which I still intend to do something like that in the future since it ended so abruptly in the last one but um, for this one we're going to make a bit of a change and instead of relying solely on active hunting with a little bit of trapping on the side I plan on going for a fishing playthrough with this one as well so we're going to be doing the quests and fishing as much as we possibly can. I will be using the fishing scenario as well so let's jump into the character creation and get started. I will be using the custom character creation as opposed to the easy or too easy one and I'd like to select something different than normal in terms of our culture as well. Typically I go for the Kamo which is a bit more warlike. They're a larger breed but uh, we're going to go for the Islander this time around. I think that suits our theme a little bit better with being a fisherman and we'll go for a male. Ah now the toughest choice of all what shall our name be? All right, how about this one? Poseidon. That seems like an apt name for our character. All right, and we will proceed. Now, I think this portrait here, the Orlando Bloom character, I think he's the only one who has like a lake behind him. This guy, maybe that's a lake back there or a field of ice. I'm not sure. This one, oh yeah, the big blue. So that's a nice choice. Now, we are going to do the autumn, I think, for a season. I'd like to give him a little bit of a buffer because we're going to be starting off fishing as opposed to just hunting. So he might get a little cold until we can actually get some skins traded or maybe get lucky and get some game as well. But if you are a newer player, I suggest you go for the spring or summer, definitely. If you want the ultimate challenge, well, then there's always the winter. But uh, autumn it is now. Here we go. So for this physical profile and personality, I like to spend several, a little bit of time I'm rolling as much as it takes to get somebody who I really like. Again, if you're new and you think you'll be dying a lot, because remember this is a very punishing roguelike, don't worry too much about getting the perfect setup here, but um, I want to keep this guy for alive for as long as possible. So I'm going to hit the no button in to re-roll here. And as you can see, I'll be looking mainly at will and intelligence. I want something definitely above average for both of those. The will, I think, affects mainly like the rituals and spirit realm connection, whereas the intelligence is what affects kind of your starting stats in the different skills and stuff. That's not too bad. And I'll be looking at the physical profile secondary, but I still want something a little bit more than this. This guy could barely, barely hold one or two slender trunks here. So like I said, I will spend some time re-rolling until I get somebody who I really like. Oh, that's pretty close. And I'll let you see what I come up with. All right. Well, I think I've found just about the pinnacle of Islander type characters here. He's almost breaking the 200 pound mark but not quite which is important for like carrying capacity and stuff like that he's got great strength pretty good endurance and all the rest here speed's also helpful because we will probably have to do a little bit of active hunting like i said just for some furs and his will is very strong average intelligence which is kind of uh the downside touch smell taste hearing not that important but uh, i like this guy so we will be going with him hit yes now we get to look at our spells and magic means we don't get to change or affect anything here it's just for kind of our general starting knowledge and we get to look let's see what the rod fisherman sacrifice is the very first fish of the spring that you catch with a fishing rod in open water season should be thrown back into the water to please the spirit and assure your future fishing fishing success there we go so that's good our future fishing luck it says actually 
What's the next one? When going rod fishing, you should first throw your fishing rod into the water and then you have good luck fishing. Okay. So we've got a couple of instructions here. The green one is an active ritual we can do, like just sacrificing meat essentially. And there's a few others we can learn too. So that's kind of the goal. One of the goals is to open up more of these and unlock these through shaman teachings. But uh, like I said, can't do much here except to read them. So let's just move on. And here we go. Okay, the skill screen. Very important. Now, when I chose the custom build, this means that I'm limited to only putting five points in and that's it. I can't remove points and then add them to another category or anything like that. We strictly have five points to spend and nothing more. So I'm going to put one in the bow just as a backup, you know, in case our fishing fails or if we just happen to run into something. And I think of the physical skills, I'll leave these as is. You kind of develop those over time if, as you use them a lot. Now, this is going to be the important ones. And his tracking is so bad. Or, I'm sorry, trapping. I'm going to put one in there. And also, you can add more than one point to a particular skill. So I can't boost my trapping all the way up if I wanted. It doesn't let you do that. But let's definitely put one in fishing. And I'll probably, honestly, trade for most of my nets. So I'm going to save that and put one in building. Sounds strange, but it helps with early game shelters and stuff like that. Makes it quicker. And, oh boy, timber craft. This is also kind of goes hand in hand with building, you know, makes things a little bit quicker when you're felling down trees and things like that, which is important for all characters. So I think we'll go with that. Okay. Yep. That's it. This is our guy. Very unskilled, not very specialized, but that's part of the challenge. So here we go. Now we get to choose the world so we can re-roll a couple of things. Let's pull up the cultures here, remove the legend, and you can see where some of the general cultures are. Now, if I remove that again, we can just see the geography. I, this is a good work looking world. I don't see any reason to re-roll this, but I could randomize the world again with W. What I am going to do is re-randomize my starting location. So the square here, that's me. I'm going to hit the R button to go ahead and move him around. Unfortunately, you can't select a spot. It's just random. But I'm going to pull this back up so I have a knowledge of where the cultures are in relation to my guy here. But um, let me see what I can do. I'm kind of hoping to either start off down here, kind of to the south, maybe near one of these cultures over here, or even up here to the north would be kind of cool. But I'd like to be on the coast for obvious reasons. So let me see if I can't get myself a nice starting spot. Okay, well, I did actually re-roll the world a couple of more times just because I was looking for a larger area of flatland down here to the south. And if we zoom in real quick, it's going to be jarring here for a second, but if, um, come on, why can't I zoom? Come on now. Sometimes if you use the mouse in combination with the keyboard, it won't let you do things properly. There we go. Okay, so we've got it. And, okay, one more time. You can see now there's a nice little river right there. And this is going to be very important for, not extremely important. We could find some water along the coast that wouldn't freeze over during winter. But here in the river, there'll be rapids and things like that, which we can uh, fish in all winter long. So it'll be nice to build maybe a shelter along this too, if we choose not to necessarily go for the coastline. And as you can see, there's a good amount of hunting ground. The darker areas indicate flat, treeless areas where we can chase stuff around for miles and miles if need be so that's handy and if we look just over to our left our actual starting location is pretty close to the drick culture here this turquoise blue color these guys are fairly good trading partners so there's a couple of villages right next to us i have a feeling with our uh the goods we'll be starting with this is a decent uh decent place to begin because we can do some trading right out the bat so let's hit enter 
And like I said, we're going to be going for the I want to be a fisherman scenario. Now, if you want something more challenging, hurt, helpless, and afraid is one of the most extreme challenges. Of course, runaway slave is considered the hardest because you basically start off in a combat scenario with almost no weapons. But we're going to do something a little bit more easy, laid back, and a little bit more in theme, the fisherman route. So this means we get some extra gear, which is going to be exciting. Let's see. So also real quick, if you'd like, go ahead and pause the video and read through the flavor text here. Gives you an idea of our background, you know, why we're going out into the wild by ourselves. But I'm going to go ahead and move on through this screen here. And we can select a game course, essentially kind of like an active tutorial in a way. If you're very new, you might want to do Living in the Wild. If you're a bit more advanced and you've played a couple times and you feel more confident, try the Advanced Adventures. But I'm going to do just the basic setup because I don't want the pop-ups hitting me all the time. But um, one thing to note is when you get in the game past the encyclopedia and the background again, you can actually hit the F5 button and bring that game course up and activate it at any time or change it or whatever. But here we go, folks. We have now entered the game world. We are officially in the Unreal World. And here's our world map. See, starting off just next to the Drick, as we decided. Let's uh, zoom out a little bit so I can get a better idea of where we're at. I'm just going to turn the character a little bit. But before we do any traveling, let's check our inventory and see what we've got. Oh, well, we're starting off okay. We've got a small, rough trident. Yeah, we've got a spear. That'll be good. Woolen cloak, two nets. Very nice. Fishing rod. Well, I can't say this is the strongest starting gear that we could have gotten because it's kind of random whenever you start. You might get two spears or a bow and arrow and a spear, but... Let's see, I think we can still probably trade away the spear if needs be, and the clothing itself isn't terrible, but we will definitely need some hand pieces, like some fur, and more of the just fur in general to get through the winter, but uh, we've got a little bit of time. Like I said, we started off in the fall, so there's a bit of a window here before the snow sets in. I think it's probably a good idea to head to the south. Let's Well, let's at least find some water. There we go. As a fisherman, we must find water. Oh, we've encountered a squirrel. I don't think we're going to zoom into this encounter right now. Um, eh, you know what? Let's go ahead and do it. Let's just see what we've got. Oh, okay. I can see the squirrel is right here in this tree. And it's hard to tell, but I always look for the little blue arrow, which is very tiny. Unless I zoom in a bit more. Is it the very bottom corner? But let's take it back out and let's just move in on him. Is he going to stay in the tree? Or is he going to jump around? I don't have a lot to throw at him. So I'm actually going to pick up this uh, rock right here. Okay, now I'll zoom in a little bit, make things easier to see. Go ahead and take a shot at him with our rock. Oh, he switched trees, but that's okay. He's still in range. Oh, didn't quite hit him. Let's try the spear. Nope. Try the trident. Oh, no. Flew past him. All right, the club. Why not? No, <laughs> that was way off. Okay, so he has outsmarted all of our weapon attempts, but no worries. Let me go ahead and grab all my stuff. He's still there, so what I'm going to actually do is probably come grab a few more of these rocks. That'll make things a little easier. I don't have to throw my club up in the trees. Oh, there we go. I got him. It was actually with the trident, too. I just got sick of uh, picking up the stones over and over again. So let's go ahead and wield our knife. It's nice we got the broad knife. That's kind of cool. I'll go ahead and hit the blunt skull. Repeat, the, whoops, repeat that a couple of times. Shouldn't take too many. Okay, I think we've got him. So let's inspect that body. It says harmed, small uh, squirrel carcass. That's not bad. Harmed is not bad. It could be mangled or something like that. And essentially what that means is if it's too bad, we won't be able to use the skin. But 
I think that squirrel skin is probably okay. It's probably going to be tradable once we get it all processed. Or we can start making a pair of squirrel skin gloves with that. Okay, well, check it out. I've decided to move to the coast after all. We're just not that far from our starting place, but I just kind of headed southeast until I hit the big water. And here we are at the edge of some nice open flat land, right at a spot where I happen to see a fox next door. So instead of trying to pursue that fox, we'll, we'll zoom into this little spot here with the forest. I'm going to take a pull back here on our view. Just kind of look around. It started us right here on top of this nice little hill. The pink plants you see all around, these are heather. We should know this, or yeah, it is heather. And it's edible. It's also good for treating wounds topically and things like that. I think you can also boil it for certain kinds of flu treatment. But here is the water. This is pretty cool. Now the question is, do you will this actually remain unfrozen throughout the winter. We don't know that yet because, well, the ice hasn't come in. It's not cold enough to tell. But um, I think this is just as good a spot as any, really, to go ahead and settle because I'm not going to be able to tell until it's actually winter. And if we have to build multiple shelters just for winter, that's okay. Not a big deal. But one thing I do like about this location is if we look at these little islands off in the water, it's kind of fun to step off. Let's see, I don't want to do it now because I don't have a fire going or anything yet, but we could jump over to that, well not jump, but swim or wade over to those little islands and set up traps there in hope of getting a seal potentially. So that's gonna be a nice little way of doing some passive hunting hopefully. But anyway, let me go ahead and pick up some branches and a few more resources to get our first little base started. Oh, wow. Check this out. So I was, of course, collecting some resources near our new area, and I noticed this nettle. Now, correct me if I'm wrong out there, but I think this is fairly rare, at least to find it in the wild like this. I think you do find it occasionally growing up near villages and stuff if they're farming near there. But here in the wild, that's a pretty good get. And with the mod set we have, it's kind of the basis for a lot of different needle, like crafting and stuff, yarn and things, I believe. So that will be interesting, but um, I'm not going to spend all day. I guess I can go ahead and just harvest most of it. God, there's a lot, though. This is good. Now, let's go ahead and look at it. Oops. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and look at what it actually says about metal. It is edible when consumed in any form and nourishes the whole body, helping to restore normal tone after poor diet. Uh, when boiled, it strengthens lungs and relieves disorders of the chest. When applied topically, it stops bleeding and constricts body tissue, creating a barrier to infection in wounds and burns. Very helpful stuff, that metal. No doubt about it. So it, I, I'll just leave whatever's left up here to the north. I mean, it's gonna have it's gonna be good to have that in our back pocket for sure. But I got 69 bunches, exactly. Um, we'll go ahead and eat a little bit. I have confidence we'll be able to catch some fish here shortly. So, all right, I think I've got enough branches. It's time to cut down our first real tree. Now, since we don't have an axe yet, we're just gonna have to use the slender trunks. But that is, in fact, what we need to build a shelter. Now, my guy is not quite strong enough to carry that many let me see if i can just drop one nope okay we'll just drop drop them all um i guess this is just about as good a place as any let's move inland just a little bit with our slender trunks here we go all right that's a good spot and i will build the shelter just below us here we'll do s to the south perfect says the knife is an unhandy tool. Oh uh, yeah, we didn't quite finish the task. So let me rest up and get this completed real quick here. We're going to hit rest. We are getting weary, so we're going to finish this just in time. Oh, uh, very nice. Extremely tired. And we'll step into our brand new shelter. Since it's about bedtime, let's go ahead and have a snack. Eat that roasted cut. And sure, we'll have a couple of nettle leaves for as like a salad. Sounds delicious. We have a straight shot to the water's edge here too. So if I need to, I can just wake up in the night and stumble to the river. 
take a nice little gulp of water. But uh, time for bed, everybody. I will see you in the morning. Okay, good morning, everybody. Time to stand up, face the day. So first things first, we've got our shelter. Food is not the number one priority. I would say it's important to get up a little bit of firewood and then maybe a, some cordage too, but we will do some fishing, don't doubt it. Oh, there's some new grass here. Look at this, slimy grass. So this is one of the types that we don't recognize. That's why it just calls it slimy. It'll give it some sort of interesting, unique little modifier, just name if you don't know, or adjective if you don't know what the plant is. So that's, that's a mystery to us. We don't want to mess with that either. Don't go eating plants you're not sure of. Okay, I think we'll, like I said, collect a little bit of wood for today. Starts raining. It is going to be a pain not being able to pick any of these up, but I'll just have to kind of slide them over. There we go. Okay, that's a decent little stockpile for now. Tell you what, I can't resist, guys. Let's go fishing. That's what this one's all about. It's a fishing playthrough. And, of course, questing as well. But this is what everybody's been waiting for, at least what I have. So we hit A. And, oh, shoot, should we go out into the water and set up our nets? I wonder just how shallow I can set these up. No, nope, can't get into the water. The water's not deep enough. I'm worried if we step into the water, it's going to be super cold. I mean, we've got enough to start a fire over here, right? Let's just do it. Let's go ahead and do it because I can set up the fire and then we can tend to the squirrel carcass and warm up after I've set my nets. That's what we'll do. All right, I'll drop some branches here. Get ready for the fire. Not going to light it just yet. Or maybe I should. Yeah, yeah, Let's go ahead and light it. Okay, there we go. Fire's lit and we're going to step to the shore once again. Now we will enter the water. Yes. We're just waiting right now. We're not swimming. Okay, now it's asking me if I want to swim. So I'm going to say no. I'm going to try to place the nets at this boundary. Oh, it's not deep enough. All right, I will swim. This is risky. I don't want to move too far. Let's try and net the, set the net. Oh, it says it's still not deep enough there. Really? Oh boy, this is risky, guys. We could end it all right here before we get started. Still not deep enough. Well, we tried. Let's move back into the... Okay. You know what's good, too, is we're only cool. That really didn't drop me that much. I didn't really need the fire, so that's okay. Well, we know the nets won't work until I have some sort of boat or raft, which is not a problem. In fact, we can get that... We can get a raft built fairly easily. I just need some rope and probably an axe would help so let's do some active fishing fishing rod with iron hook baby now i don't know if i can you may use a piece of food i was just gonna say i don't know if we can do bait let's try the nettle leaves question mark oh we caught four perches baby nice let's repeat that with the rod and four nettles okay look at that seven perches i'm going to take a drink and since we're catching some fish let's go ahead and have a bite to eat i'll have some of this rye bread sounds delicious now is the fire still going it is beautiful i started a pretty good one let's go ahead and roast these up right or wait hold on what do i have on me i need to check and see I need to go ahead and get some saplings. There we go. I do have two spruce saplings, so I'm going to turn those into cordage real quick. Okay, there we go. So now I have four spruce whites. These are four foot pieces of basically braided primitive cordage. And I'm going to use those next to my shelter here to try and dry some of these fish. I just want to test it and see if it's cold enough to actually dry fish. So it says raw meat. We want to use all seven of them. That's fine. Um, the weather doesn't suit the task. It's too warm and humid at the moment. Okay. So we won't worry about that. What I'm going to do is just go ahead and roast them. But that's okay because that actually gives me time to go ahead and get some more spruce whites. 
I can get more cordage, get prepared. Because I think drying and smoking our fish is going to be a big deal for us. We're going to be, it's going to allow us to trade a bunch of these and stuff. But that's a decent amount of food. Now, I don't want to go fishing while it's cooking because it might burn. So I'm just going to pass a little bit of time. Probably cut down some branches here a couple of times. And it'll usually say, yeah, the smells like the roasted perch is ready. There we go. All right, seven perches. So that's quite a bit, right? Let's see, seven. That's almost that's seven pounds of food, basically, right there. That's a lot. Oh, yeah. So we need to get the ability to either smoke meat or we just need to pass some time so we can start drying these and trading them away. Wow, that's decent. Oh, boy. Well, I just gave it another shot. Actually, I tried three more times. And I basically wore myself out. I'm now extremely tired. It's midnight and we didn't catch a thing. So it's even though we got extremely lucky our first two times, it's not a guaranteed thing. So let me go ahead and have a nice little bite to eat. Eat some of that rye bread and some of the salted black grouse cut. And I think we're going to bed, guys. Let's do it. Okay, there we go. Early morning. I figure today... Let's give the spear a try. So I do have, um, wait, if I go S and then fishing, active fishing with the trident. Yeah, let's try this. Uh, oh, bull elk. What? Yes, abort the task. Look at that right to the north there. There's a bull elk just appeared at our campsite. A small one. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. You know, the good news is we're actually at a little spot here that's surrounded, well, relatively surrounded by open spaces. So I'm thinking this might be an opportunity to hunt this elk down if I can just keep him in sight and chase him for a while. It is an ordeal, though, to go on an active hunt like this, but ultimately it might be worth it especially at the outset of winter and uh, the fall season here because we're going to need some better clothing there's no doubt about that so tell you what guys how about we save the first hunt for tomorrow's episode i hope you will tune in for that one where it's going to bring this today's episode to a close though we've done a little bit of fishing and it was successful questing of course that's going to be the big project the larger goal of the series so as we venture back in with some trading and stuff to the villages and civilized areas will encounter more quests and stuff so i hope you look forward to that guys thank you so much for tuning in for the unreal world series there is a very fun and active community out there who follows this game and i appreciate you guys for tuning in and watching it brings me a lot of joy to play the game and share it with other people so thank you again and i will see you all on the next one